we must stick with the people that make us feel safe. 48 hours into learning, my wife was on the path to a full-blown affair. Needed to write this somewhere as I feel like I have nobody to talk to at the moment. Forgive me if I ramble. This October will mark 27 years of our marriage. We have two kids. Our daughter lives at home with us, recently married while waiting for her husband's deployment to the Air Force. Our son is a Marine and lives on the opposite coast. We've had a rough patch for probably the last six months that is mainly based on me having AD, to be blunt. My wife wants a lot of sex and there's only so far I can go. Tried multiple pills and nothing has worked. Use toys and try to get creative. But for her, it's not the real thing. She was becoming more and more distant and actually lashing out of me, saying I didn't love her anymore or I wasn't attracted to her. I've had my own struggles dealing with AD and I did turn her down for sex sometimes because I feel horrible about how it goes down, knowing she is not fully satisfied. My wife is on social media quite a bit and posts a lot. Nothing crazy, but be different in that way. I like to read what my friends are up to, but don't post a lot while she is constantly posting. For a couple of months, she started posting a lot of pictures of herself which typically get a lot of her friends telling her how beautiful she is. I noticed a guy was all over her posts, but figured, hey, some guy probably has a crush on my wife. But my wife would never engage in anything like that. So, the last few months, my wife started becoming more distant while getting upset with me and suggesting I was the one not giving her enough attention. With the whole COVID thing, she's not working and I'm working full-time at home. I figured this was the case of the stress of everything going on, but made an effort to engage even more with her. I would come out of her office as much as possible during the day and come down to talk to her. She was clearly shutting me down and pushing me away. At that point, we had a huge blow-up where she laid out everything she's unhappy about. I'm not giving her what she needs. She needs to feel closeness. She needs more intimacy. Longer discussion led to her saying our current sex life was a big problem and she craves so badly what no longer works in me. I feel awful but don't know what else to try. So to try and get to where things went completely sideways. Two nights ago we were talking and her phone goes off. I was right next to her and it was a Facebook messenger message from a guy. The same guy who was heavily engaging with her on Facebook. It pops up right in front of us. Quote, miss you, thinking about you, quote. I'm like, what the hell is that? She starts by explaining that he's just a friend that she knew growing up and he reached out on Facebook. They knew each other's families, so it really is nothing. What proceeded to happen throughout the night was unwinding a series of lies where I would learn more and more. They have been talking for months, but just reminiscing about family and childhood stories. Then it went to she was telling him she is struggling in her marriage, but she swears that was it. I pushed her to come clean and it went further. They were exchanging fantasies about what they would do to each other. She was breaking down, saying she just needed sex so bad. And again, we have sex in the sense that we do as much as we can without penetration. She finally says, I have to go out, I promise I'll be back. But I know this is horrible and I need to think. I almost lost it as she was walking out and said, please don't leave me, but I bit my tongue. I figured she was going to call a friend or something. I'm talking at girlfriends here. And maybe a dick move, it hits me that what are the odds she is talking to this guy. I went to the Verizon site and looked at her phone logs. Sure enough, it showed a number she had a 30 minute call with right after she left. I started doing every bit of research to find out who it was. It was getting really late. 
and I was super concerned about why she wasn't coming back. I texted a few times, but she didn't answer. Eventually, I get a text around 2am that she's coming home. When she got home, I asked what she had done. She told me she went to see one of her girlfriends, and I said, Who did you call? She said she called her girlfriend. I know her friend's number because our families are friends. So I said, I know you made another call. She looked shocked, and I said, Just come clean. She said when she left, she called him to tell him what was happening. I pointed out that she has been continuously lying throughout the night. So, at that point, just come out with all of it. So, throughout the night and into the dawn, it all came out. She said they haven't had sex yet, but they were at that point, they were planning on it, and she said it was definitely going to happen. I asked her multiple times throughout the night if it was going to stop, and she was invested in us. Every time, I got a non-committal answer. She's confused, she feels lost. She told me that she wouldn't talk to him at one point, but he reached out to her the next day and they spoke for about 20 minutes. Sorry for rambling. I don't have the first clue what to do. I really have no one to talk to. It's so weird that she is looked at as a pillar of our community and I'm just a quiet, hard-working husband. If it were to be told that there was an affair going on between us, I guarantee everyone that knows us wouldn't want to know what the hell I have done. Maybe that doesn't matter, but again, it's just feeling like I can't turn anywhere. I don't even know how to wrap this up. I'm in so much pain. I can feel physical pain from this. My chest is hurting and I feel so sick. If you read this far, thank you. I don't know what to do, I'm sorry. I feel like the fact that she was posting pictures on her social media was because she was already talking to this guy. I think AD is never a cause for anyone to stray away from their relationship and look for some sort of validation elsewhere. This isn't on you. It seems as though she's attacking your masculinity which definitely isn't something you need in a scenario like this. In fact, it more than likely makes it worse on you physically. Additionally, by the sounds of it, it's due to your wife's own ego and insecurities. But there are so many other factors in a relationship that can bring two people together to share intimacy. Intimacy, closeness and security can come from all sorts of angles, not just sexually. I'm sorry this has happened. And I'm sorry this has placed so much pressure on you. It was one of the darkest times of my life, but I wanted to share this update because in my mind, a miracle happened the night I posted this. I wanted to share that there's definitely hope for the future when your life might seem to be crashing all around you. Writing the post was very difficult and out of the character for me, but at the time, I felt like I had nobody to turn to. If you look through the thread, there is one reply that basically says, I've sent you a message. I responded, and over the next few weeks, this woman shared her story with me, very similar, and gave me advice and support. We learned about each other and eventually developed a friendship. We went from Reddit messaging to texting and talking and eventually we agreed to meet our closest friends were warning us to take things slow, but something clicked in us, and it wasn't long after we met and started seeing each other that we knew we were in love. Fast forward to three years later, marriage is in our future. I am more happy and in love than I have ever been. It's not lost on us that we both shared a horrible experience in infidelity. It's admittedly something that we bonded us together, but that's also increased our communication abilities as we know we are two people with emotional scars. The love and safety that I feel with this woman is immeasurable. 
So I'm sharing this today because it's been three years. You can and will get through your hardships. There's happiness and love out there. The best advice I got going through it was to work on myself, eat right, exercise and self-care. Work on myself to become better. Don't worry about everything else and happiness and joy will find you. Don't give up. Keep pressing forward and there are good things to come in your life. Let's see some community comments. Fluid Beak 8126 says, Sometimes you need to just meet the right person. And Eddie, what's that? I'm glad Reddit came to our rescue. Obviously, the little fella was protesting what happened to your wife. OP replies, My ex-wife pretty much got dumped after meeting up with her guy. She's had a couple of boyfriends since. She hasn't learned anything since we divorced, and she's buzzing through money. And my grown-up kids have told me they are already talking about what they will have to do with mom once she runs out of money. I'm pretty much 100 cut her out of my life. The Mockingbird wants to say, Did the self-care help out with the AD? Or do you attribute that with the healthy relationship? I'm glad you moved on especially with how long your marriage was. At the time, it's pretty inspirational. I hope the kids likes the new wife. OP replies, The self-care certainly helped. I am much better, but I still have good days and bad days. But the biggest difference in all of it is being with a partner who specifically told me, You are safe with me. We are in this together. And she has been true to her words. A healthy relationship certainly makes a difference. What a beautiful turnout. All it takes is someone to accept us just as we are. I'm so glad you both have each other. OP, wishing you both well. What are your thoughts? Second story. Next up, we should never blame ourselves. My husband cheated for the three months and asking for a separation. What is next? I'm a working mom, 40 female with two children, eight female and four male. My 41 male husband just told me yesterday he cheated on me last year for three months. I'm now quite shell-shocked. We've been together since I was 23. That is 17 years worth of relationship, out of which we were married for 10. When asked why, he said he could not find the emotional connection with me. Now, and plus, the lady he cheated on me with is pretty hot. I admit I have let myself go with parenting and trying to maintain the household. When asked if he still loves me, he said no. And then he felt immense guilt. Hence, he's letting me know four months after he ended that relationship. He also said he felt trapped and that a relationship has evolved into one where we only focus on kids. The thing is, he is always facing his computer screen, even when I'm in the same room as him. With that, I thought I'm giving him space. I'm just down now. I have always been as a big supporter when he told me at the end of last year he is in debt for 50,000. After lashing out on him for not sharing and always keeping to himself, I took out almost all of my savings to help him. I'm the type of wife who gives him a lot of space and never questions his whereabouts as I trusted him. He dropped the ball on picking the kids up and household course to focus on his new business and I picked up the slack despite myself working full time. Our parents are two happy kids to the best of my abilities and he just said he felt trapped. Now he is asking for separation. He will go look for a lawyer, so what should I do next? Update. Thank you, everyone, for their support and advice. I'm hesitating to be too harsh on him, as he had been a pretty handsome father with the two of them. His debt was due to the loans he took up for his studies. I have at least stopped some monthly transfers meant for savings and investments for children's future studies to give myself some liquidity. Today is a public holiday in Liu, so likely no lawyer is working. 
but I have emailed one to get a consultation for my options. My two kids were also sick. The younger one had a fever since Friday. The husband broke the news he had cheated on Saturday night. And everything is just overwhelming. I did not cry much on Friday night. But yesterday and today, I have been crying. Not many people to talk to because most of my friends were never divorced. Please don't mind me posting here, now and again. I think you have to protect yourself financially, OP. It seems you have provided a lot to him and dug him out of some big holes. That kindness isn't often rewarded when going through a divorce. I think if your ex is willing to cheat on you without telling you, and he's capable of much worse, you need to set you and your kids up for success. Update. For now, it gets tough, but I will get tougher. For context, my soon-to-be ex broke the news that he cheated last year two days before. We are now on day three. My two kids were still sick. I broke the news gently to my older child yesterday and she cried. She wanted us to stay on as a family of four, but this is something I cannot give her and I feel like I have disappointed her. She seems okay today, easily frustrated with her online second language homework, but that is to be understood and giving her lots of hugs today while I work from home. My younger one, three-year-old turning four by the end of the year, is a different case altogether. I did not tell him anything yet. I don't think he will understand, but he woke up at 6 a.m. today, had stomach pain, vomited water on his whole bed, and was super clingy. Today, he insisted on sitting on my lap the whole morning while I was working. Any attempt to peel him off and leave the study room, he melted down. I cried when he cried, had to tell him, Mommy is not going anywhere. I was hanging laundry earlier and looked down 15 stories. I had to tell myself I have two kids who depend on me. I am tough and I will get over this. Please tell me this will get easier. Update. We had a third talk. Apparently, he wants the separation to cool off. And he recognized the need for him to look for a psychologist. He also asked for us to keep each other updated on our individual therapy progress so that we can go for couples concealing. I don't know about that. I'm kind of going into rage mode and preparing for the worst. Luckily, by the time he is ready, the boats would have been already sailed. This would be fun to unpack in front of psychologists. Separation papers to sign this Friday. However, I will keep the peace just for the kids. Updates. Life still goes on post-separation. Well, it is day two post-signing the separation papers. Wayward husband moved out of the house and life still went on for me and the children. I do have to wake them up slightly earlier to get them to school on time. But the children have been cooperating and have been relatively obedient. With small scoobies, I can still cook dinner for them. I can still work and earn income. I can still do my rule as a mother. I did not cry in front of him when we went to close a joint account and sign the papers. I kept my chin up high. He admitted he is screwed up and he looked emotional. But I don't want to care for his feelings anymore. He created a situation where he betrayed me, his silence, and biggest supporter, and the children. I had lunch with my bestie after and cried with her. Then I went to have my second therapy session, and I felt relieved and blessed that I still have my children, I still have my independence, and I lost the dead weight and no longer have to live a life monitoring his space to see if he approves or not. I still can't set objectives. I can make arrangements that make me happy, and being able to do this makes me feel thankful. Tomorrow is my birthday, and I have made plans to get a hair makeover, and once the helper comes, I will be able to put more effort into exercising. Once I drop some weight, maybe I will arrange for a celebrity photo shoot with my two children among tall grasses to commemorate our survival, 
life is still good. Let's check for one community reaction real quick. E Blackburn 4017 says, Sounds nuts, but I watch videos of caged animals who felt grass for the first time. I realized they were like us in a way. I was tied to a man in lockdown while he explored and experienced everything without me. I didn't know what I was missing because my reality was being his wife and a young mother of two. I didn't know about the uncertainties outside of what I knew until I did. Now my ex is just someone who I used to know. I have thrifts, I love my life. In the beginning I was afraid and so extremely hurt but now I embrace my life. If I die today, despite everything, I know I will feel the joy of the knowledge that I lived a great life. That way it sounds right. OP seems like you had three children on your hands. This is going to open so many new doors for you. You are going to be just fine. Now you can focus on you and the kids without having someone who doesn't care about you play games and drag you down. Thoughts Should OP have stuck around for consoling? Did she make the right choice by leaving? Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.